All right, folks, so the operating room is set up. Everything's set to go. And we're gonna start tearing this bad boy down so that those parts can go in. I've never done this before, but I'm hoping everything turns out okay. Alright, so far I've got the uh, radiator reservoir, the fan shroud, the fan out. Um, the upper intake is just about ready to come out. Uh, there's a couple of vacuum lines that I have to get loose. Uh, the intake is out. Uh, the coolant lines are disconnected up here. So, making a little bit of progress. Um, again, never done anything like this before. Uh, this is pretty exciting and scary for me at the, at the same time. Uh, one thing. I want to show you is that it looks like I've got a little squirrel's nest in here. Um, I have a walnut tree next to my house and it looks like they've been feasting inside my engine bay, which is not good. Um, there's nothing I can do about that. So we're just going to keep plugging along and uh, oh yeah, just for comparison, here's the new intake that's going in and the old BBK intake, which is uh, getting ready to be for sale. So if you want it, hit me up. So here's the difference. <laughs> Pretty big difference between the uh, size of the intakes. All right, so as you can see here, this is like the fifth bee's nest I found in my car. Um, it's a lot of wires, a ton of vacuum lines. The upper intake manifold is off. Um, that was a little bit more difficult than I expected, just getting the last few vacuum lines off. And um, a few more bolts and, uh, let's see, I gotta get my fuel rail off. And then a few bolts for the upper intake, I mean for the lower intake, and that'll be off, and then I'll probably call it a night. So that's how it's looking so far, folks. All right, folks, so we've got half of the top end of the motor off. Uh, the lower intake is out now. I haven't found any more beehives. I'm pretty sure bees don't live inside the motor. Um, so there's my rockers, all that stuff. Everything came off fairly easy. Uh, the vacuum lines are going to be pretty confusing trying to figure that stuff out uh, when everything goes back together, but I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. Um, I threw some penetrating oil on the water pump bolts. Hopefully those don't give me trouble. Um, and here's my stacks of everything coming off, going on. Just got stuff everywhere. Alrighty folks, it's day two. It looks a whole lot different here in this engine bay. I uh, haven't taken any video up to this point because we've just been busy working on this thing trying to get the cam out, but uh, the head is actually getting ready to come off. We haven't pulled it off yet, so if you want to go ahead and do the honors. It's caught on the header. There we go. Cool. You could just let it run. Just set it on the floor. Here's what the inside of my cylinders looks like. Look at that, I got some nice notched pistons. I don't know if that's stock. So a lot of you guys watching know more than me. Let me know, are these stock pistons? They look pretty good besides the coolant that ran down in there. A couple of them are kind of nasty in the front, but these are really clean back here. So there it goes. All right, looks like the end of day two. Here's the old head that came off of the motor. Um, the folks that were in here working with me said that it looks like it was definitely burning coolant. So this car ran really well, as bad as it was. Uh, one funny thing is like all the bolts on this motor were hand tight, or not even hand tight. Like some of these things were just super loose, but here's what the new stuff looks like going in. So the heads are on. Um, Tomorrow, we'll be working on the intake, the valve covers, the accessories, and whatever else we can get. It's been a productive day. All right, folks, it's day three. I'm literally sitting here inside of the engine bay. Um, not doing anything major today, just mostly buttoning up a lot of little small stuff. Uh, what I'm working on here is actually getting um, I shouldn't have put my rockers on first, but I did. Now I have to take them all off. What I'm doing here is dropping my push rods in and putting my rockers back on. 
and uh, getting them started, but I'm not getting them. Uh, I'm not getting the proper valve lash right now. I'm just trying to get everything back together. Um, I went ahead and drained the oil out of the oil pan because that was all nasty uh, after the coolant drained into it. Um, the last thing I'm going to be doing today is uh, reattaching the headers, putting the header gaskets in, and uh, I'll be calling it a day. So tomorrow, hopefully I'll be able to tackle all of these vacuum lines, um, hopefully eliminate some of them. Uh, I'll be putting the intake on, which is back there, and the fuel rails, and a bunch of other stuff. So um, getting fairly close to uh, completion. Oh yeah, then there's the whole front end of the motor that has to go back on. So, getting closer to completion. Uh, don't quite see the light at the end of the tunnel yet, but moving along fairly well. All right, so we've got all the push rods put in. Uh, the rockers are not torqued down properly or aligned or uh, basically they're just sitting on there. Um, went and cleaned up a few areas inside the engine bay that were just a little bit crusty. I removed the rat nest uh, and vacuumed up a lot of the dust in the crud. Um, tomorrow, since we have space, we're actually going to try and uh, combat some of this rust that we have right here going on. Uh, so the last thing we're going to do is attach these headers, put the header gaskets on. And uh, what I've done is I've picked up these Allen key bolts right here. So as you can see, those will take an Allen key. But they should be a lot easier to take in and out because the stock bolts look a lot like this and uh, they sit right up against the headers and they're just really a pain to get in and out. So hopefully the Allen key bolts will be a little bit better. All right, so we're getting ready to go ahead and put the header gaskets in. Uh, in order to do that, you want to put in your two uh, bolts on the ends here. So. There's a bolt there on that end, and there's a bolt there on the far end that you can't see because of the shadow, but it's it's right there in the middle of the screen. Uh, so get the two bolts in there, and then these hooks will actually hook onto those bolts. So you just slide it down into that slot. And there it is, and now you can throw the rest of your bolts in there. So I've got this area cleaned up now. Um, it's far from perfect, but most of the rust is off. Uh, one good thing is um, initially it looked like it was rusted all the way through and it's not. It was actually just surface rust. So um, I went ahead and cleaned it up. I'm still gonna go ahead and weld some reinforcement over top of that. So that's what I'm working on right now. So there's what the final repairs look like. You know, it's not the greatest repair in the world, but it's good enough for Gas Monkey. So let's go ahead and get started on this motor. All right, so fast forward. Um, all the front accessories are on. Uh, we still have to do the fan, but we're going to do the fan and the radiator very last. These awesome valve covers are on. And um, we're actually getting ready to mount the lower intake. And once we do that, it's going to be it for the night. All right, so it's uh, we're midway through day five. Uh, I went ahead and got started without even taking any video, but you know where I left off because it was like two seconds ago for you. But uh, basically, I've been going and putting all my uh, connectors together, uh, connecting some of the vacuum lines, coolant lines. Uh, I have to run because I lost one of my uh, hose clamps, distributors on, connected. Uh, Definitely see the light at the end of the tunnel now. 
things don't look so overwhelming. Uh, I'm gonna need to figure out what this hole is, but by the time you see this video, I will have figured it out, and that'll be taken care of. Um, because that thing was just left uncovered. I don't know what part goes in it on the new one. Uh, what else? There's also this sensor, which I assume is a temperature sensor. That needs to come out of there. And it's in there so tight, I actually have to go in by myself a uh, 25 millimeter wrench to pull that out. And uh, the fuel rail is gonna go on next after I go ahead and grab myself some hose clamps. And that's going to be it for today. Alright, still making progress. So one of the things that I wanted to go back and do is to tighten this header bolt. So the way the headers are is they're, they're so close to the bolt that it's impossible to get a regular Allen wrench down there to this bolt right here. Um, it's even difficult when you have the, uh, the regular hex screws. The reason I got these is because it's actually easier to reach most of them. But with this one it's impossible to reach it with a regular Allen wrench. So what I did is I went and got myself a cheap set of Allens. I chopped this one, I beveled the edge, and it can actually fit in here past the header, and I can actually get this bolt tightened up. <clears throat> All right, so here's the end of day five. Uh, the top end of the motor is pretty much complete. Um, like I said, the radiator, that's going in last. The intake, and uh, the throttle body and of course the upper intake. Uh, I'm saving that. Um, I accidentally destroyed this cluster of vacuum lines by accident trying to move it. It was so brittle it just snapped as soon as I moved it. So looks like I'll be speeding to get to the junkyard tomorrow to try and get a new one of those. Um, whatever that is, I'm pretty sure it's important. Uh, but besides that, the new fuel rail is on, the fuel injectors, um, everything's pretty much set to go. All right, day six. Uh, so we're starting off, uh, most of the electrical connections are, pl are plugged in. Uh, the only thing that's left out is stuff that goes to the upper intake. Uh, right now I'm trying to repair the, uh, this vacuum block down here. I think that's what they call it. I uh, pretty much destroyed it last night. It was hanging behind the motor and I tried to pull it out and all these little plastic lines just snapped. So I'm trying to put back what I can, um, piece it together using the parts that are already there. Hopefully I can get that working and pipe to the right place. Um, I'm a little bit confused right now. So um, right here we have the map sensor, which has never been connected as long as I've owned the car. So I gotta figure out where that goes. Um, one of these vacuum lines is supposed to be the fuel pressure regulator, but they've been here the whole time, and I actually pulled this one off the old fuel pressure regulator, so I have to figure that one out as well. So more tedious work, um, not a whole lot of large things getting done at the moment, but hopefully soon I'll be figuring this stuff out. Uh, the other thing is, uh, I guess this is the hole for the other side of the PCV, so that runs from the back of the motor to here. Um, and I don't necessarily have the provisions for that, so maybe I'll just plug that up for now, try and get it test fired, and then uh, do some piping for that tomorrow, because uh, that's where the catch can is actually going to get installed. Uh, all right, folks, day seven. I'm kind of falling off on the video coverage, but uh, I still wanted to show the progress. So pretty much the motor is back together. This is not the final position for the intake. We're just putting it on here so we can get the car started. Um, we've got a makeshift oil cap because the big chrome cap that we have does not fit. Um, all the things are connected. All the connectors are connected. Um, we're getting ready to prime it, prime it so the spark plugs are not hooked up yet. And we're going to get ready to add radiator fluid and get this thing going. Everything's buttoned up, hopefully, and uh, we're about to give her a spin. Try to get some oil pressure. Here, go ahead and hold that. Stop, stop, stop. stop. Yeah. Fuel leak. Oh,
All right, this is take two. We had a pretty huge fuel leak uh, the first time. We had to rip the intake off, and now we're going to test it. So here we go. Stop. Nope. I'm good. The same one? Yeah, not only that, we got to watch out. We good? Do it Sounds good. Do Sounds it couple, good. Do it a couple of times. That we looking good to me. I hear it. Check the right Nothing. side. Check the right side. All right, folks. So here's this is the fourth attempt at, at um, priming the motor. We fixed the fuel leak, and uh, plugs are out right now. So we're gonna go ahead and try and get oil pressure. You getting oil pressure yet? It's gonna take like 10, 15 seconds. Huh? Not getting oil pressure. It's gonna take like 10, 15 seconds. And keep going. Yeah. All right, folks. This is the moment of truth. Everything is connected up. Um, we're gonna go ahead and give it an actual test fire. So, uh, cross your fingers. Here we go. Holy diet. All right. Are you ready? Yep. All right, um, you are way off ignition timing. This thing's incredibly advanced. The beast is alive. There's a lot of smoke coming out. All right, good morning, YouTube. Uh, as you saw last night, we finished uh, the car on day seven. We got it started and running. Uh, it actually runs pretty well for uh, not being tuned or dialed in or anything. Uh, it took us like four tries to actually get it started. We had some injectors uh, that were completely leaking. We had to take the whole top intake apart again and get that sorted out and uh, then we actually weren't getting it started because the battery just wasn't strong enough to produce a good spark so once we hooked up the battery charger to it uh, we actually got it to fire right up we got the timing dialed into a reasonable spot and the car is running and starting easily um, as you saw this is not an incredibly detailed build process but I wanted to go ahead and document just to uh, kind of show folks what it takes to actually get this install done. Um, me personally, I've never done anything this in-depth before. Uh, this is my first time ever even removing an intake manifold from an engine, uh, let alone getting all the way down to the pistons and doing heads and rockers and head gaskets and all of that stuff down in the bottom end. So, um, you know, this goes to show one of the reasons why I chose the Fox body. Uh, for my uh, build car because uh, generally everything on this car is pretty much the easiest type of stuff that you would ever work on. Um, so basically, like I said, the, the video just kind of overviews what it takes to get this done. Um, you're still going to have to do further research if you want to do this type of build yourself. Um, at this point, uh, we're just going to be... Uh, trying to get this car dialed in um, we have a slight setback because uh, if you look here I actually uh, drilled through my ECU with a power drill because things weren't difficult enough as it was um, that was really smart but anyway we'll be fixing that today we'll be installing the new ECU and uh, trying to get everything tuned and dialed in so Stay tuned, folks. Keep a lookout, and more videos will be coming. Thanks for watching.